Tonight's Town Hall is brought to you by 6ABC in partnership with the Linfest Institute's Every Voice, Every Vote, a citywide coalition elevating Philadelphia's diverse voices and informing voters. Live from 6ABC Studios, Philadelphia's mayoral race takes center stage for a night to meet and study both candidates. Moderated by Action News anchor Shari Williams, Democratic candidate Sherelle Parker, and Republican candidate David O. Sit down for exclusive one-on-one -on -one interviews, and then it's your turn to ask them questions. And now, a new chapter, the Philadelphia Mayoral Candidates Town Hall. And welcome to a new chapter, the Philadelphia Mayoral Candidates Town Hall, presented by 6ABC in partnership with the Linfest Institute's Every Voice, Every Vote initiative. This is an opportunity for you, the voters, to get to know the candidates, who they are, and where they stand on the issues that matter the most. For the first segment, I will sit down with each of the candidates for one-on-one -on -one conversations. The candidates will then take questions from the audience, from community members, and from Action News viewers who respond responded online to our request. Each candidate will then get 45 seconds for a closing statement. Let's get right to it and introduce Democrat Sherelle Parker. Oh yes, let's sit and let's have a conversation. We're ready. Yes. So this part here is really just chatting, getting to know you better. Some of it just really about who you are, your background, and some of course where you stand on important issues. And we'll do that through a conversational way. All right. So thanks for being here. Thank you. You are a longtime resident of this city. It has several points of pride, as we know, but there are, of course, many prickly parts. What is your favorite thing about living in Philadelphia? The grit, determination, and resilience of the people of our great city. We are super proud of our neighborhoods, our respective uh, ethnicities, and I love the fact that we love our communities. And there's a sense of authenticity that is required and desired by the people of the city of Philadelphia, and I happen to love it. <laughs> a place where you have to show up as your real self? Show up as your real self. We'll spot a phony a mile away. <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you this. If, if, if I were to ask, who is Sherelle Parker? How would you answer that question? Wow. Sherelle Parker's personal life story is a textbook case study of how you turn pain into power. I was raised by my grandparents, grew up on welfare. That meant food stamps, cash, cash assistance, and subsidized food. But I am the first generation college graduate in my family first-generation Ivy League graduate in my family, certified secondary English teacher by profession. So every statistic imaginable was against me. Biological father not present in my life. My grandparents who migrated from the South did the best they could with what they had in a village of people, uh, coaches, teachers, all decided, mentors, to invest in me. I am sitting here today on the cusp of potentially becoming the 100th mayor, first woman, the first time anyone like me has ever gotten close to this opportunity. And I believe it's because my real life lived experience is closest to the people who are feeling the most pain. Yeah, you've had a lot of first already uh, along in your journey. Uh, and it sounds as if family has played a big role in where you are today. 
Super. Uh, it's funny. Uh, I was joshing a friend of mine on my way over here, and I always said my grandmother had a way of getting in my head. Uh, I became a very competitive person. I'm an athlete. I was a cheerleader. I ran track, and my grandmother would often talk to me about the importance of practice, the importance of working hard. So because I've lived at the intersection of race and gender my entire life, and when you've been accustomed to having to earn your seat at the table, at whatever table you may find yourself sitting, you learn to work extremely hard for it because nothing is given to you. You talk about uh, the family whose shoulders you stand on, but now uh, you raise a son. Wow, I have a son, his name is Langston. Uh, when people say, oh, we get it, you're an English teacher by profession, Langston, yeah. Uh, it's true, he's 11 years old, and it is the hardest job in the world to do. Uh, I am proud that my former husband and I, we work extremely hard to co-parent Langston with an extremely strong village of people around us, um, and we all make it work. Let me ask you then in regards to Langston, how much does being a mother of an 11 year old boy in this city inform you on public safety needs and also the education system here? It was really uh, interesting. Um, on the campaign trail in the primary, as we just progressed through what was referred to as the most competitive, most expensive, and most intense mayoral primary election, I talked about making our public health and safety our number one priority and not taking away any constitutionally legal tool away from law enforcement to do it. With that being said, when I talked about something called Terry Stops, that is law enforcement can stop you if a crime has been, will be, or is being committed, and they have just cause and reasonable suspicion. But I watch people attempt to weaponize the tool against me uh, as if profiling, particularly that that black men have disproportionately faced in this city. And I thought to myself, how ironic, I have a black son who's chocolate like me, and he wears his hair in locks, which is natural. I know what it likes to be concerned, but I think we can have zero tolerance for any misuse and or abuse of authority by law enforcement. We'll fire you later, see you in arbitration or in court later, but we also deserve pro active community policing, walking the beat, riding the bike, rebuilding trust, getting to know the people that we are sworn to protect and serve. And we had a holistic approach, mental and behavioral health, quality of life issues, lights, cameras, smart on crime, forensics, drone, gunshot technology, and quite frankly, working together to make it happen. I, I think what I hear you saying there is for those who were coming for you in regards to what portions uh, of the legal tools police can use, you're thinking of your own son who could possibly be profiled. So then if we can unpack that a bit, where do you stand uh, on that for those who've asked about, specifically they like to use the term stop and frisk for you and what you've said on that? What I support are called Terry Stops. For the benefit of the viewing audience, again, a crime has been, will be, or is being committed, and law enforcement has just cause and reasonable suspicion to stop you. We will make sure that we have a police commissioner first who is able to put together a comprehensive plan that is in line with the vision that I am proud, Shari, to tell the people of Philadelphia that I offered before I became a candidate for mayor in this city when I heard a loud noise shouting for us to defund the police. I said, that's not what the people in the communities I represent are saying. They want to feel safe. They want to be safe, but they also want zero tolerance for any misuse and or abuse of authority. And, and listen, Philadelphia, I am real clear that there are going to be some people who will not like the holistic prescription that I would proffer to address public safety here in our city. I want you to think about a pie. It's prevention, intervention, and it's enforcement. But we are going to have to make tough decisions to bring order back to our city. And I love our city enough to do just that.
You did a quick mention there in regards to a police commissioner, and I know you haven't really said much about that, but now it's down to the final two. What insight, quickly, would you offer about where your head is about selecting the police commissioner for this city? Well, on tonight, I think this is the first time I will have said this publicly. Um, I have been working very hard um, with a, a magnifying glass over uh, the public safety field across our nation. I have been uh, thinking about uh, professionals who know public safety, who know Philadelphia, who have cultural competence, and quite frankly, emotional uh, intelligence, and they understand what that means uh, to police here in our city. We want the best and the brightest, but I do want to be very clear. Uh, because I'm homegrown and I know what it's like uh, to start at entry level and to work your way through the ranks of an organization, I very much would love to be able to identify talent, no matter where they are in our nation, but I want them to have some knowledge of our great city and not need GPS to get to Broad Nolly. So connections to this city will matter Connect for your selection. Yes. Okay. It's that Philly spirit again. I yes, can't help can't it. Yes, can't escape it. Uh, if I called your best friend, yes. what would they say that you're great at and what would they say you need to work on? Oh, gosh. They would say, well, she's a great cook and a wonderful dancer in her own mind. <laughs> um, they would say she is, um, she's terrible at self-care. She needs to do better at learning how to stop. And I am working extremely hard to learn to do that. Um, Langston is demanding it because he's not impressed with any of this. Uh, <laughs> and so I'm working really hard to learn how to make sure I'm intentional about carving out space for myself. And um, it's, a, it's an interesting uh, process, but I'm, I'm, I'm so happy, Shari, that um, because I can't paint as my authentic self and I didn't present myself as this uh, badger of perfection, this Manchurian uh, candidate, I have a village of people around me who remind me that you won't be any good or in good shape to save Philadelphia if you don't allow us to help to take care of you and you to take care of yourself. So I'm working on it. You're working on it. Yes. We all have something to work on. I yes. think people can identify identify with that. Uh, let me ask you this, and we're closing in this portion of our segment here. Uh, leadership is about collaborating and getting results. What uniquely qualifies you to be the 100th mayor of Philadelphia? My whole life experience, my real lived life has uniquely prepared me to meet this moment. During the primary, I talked a lot about my lived life experience and my intergovernmental experience. Right now, I remain the only candidate who has ever worked at the local and state government in partnership with the federal government to deliver tangible results. Philadelphia, I heard you on the campaign trail. You don't want to hear a great speech, but you want to see your neighborhood safer and cleaner and greener in the communities that we live in. Uh, I encourage people, and I'm super proud to have a record, Shari, that people can review. Uh, I was uh, coming uh, down uh, a Fifth Street, and I saw a, a sign that said, Philadelphia taking care of business, and I proudly said, that's my baby right there. A program to clean streets in neighborhoods, business quarters across the city. We're going to put it on steroids if I'm elected mayor, but those are the kind of tangible results that Philadelphians want to see. And if they give me a chance, we're going to hold transparency to the highest regard and we're going to get things done in neighborhoods. Two quick lightning questions to just quickly answer this for me. What's your favorite restaurant in Philadelphia? Oh, uh, right now, South. South. Yes. What TV show did you last binge? Oh, I can't help it. I learned so much. It's called Billions. Billions. Yes. Okay. All right. All yes. right. <laughs> we all want to get there, probably. Lastly, what was your first job? 
Oh, my first job was in a restaurant, uh, Germantown and Tioga. It was called Erie Square. I was not 14 yet. I did not have working papers, but my godmother allowed me to help her bus tables, and uh, they would live, leave me little tips. So it felt good uh, to earn. To make your own money. Yes. To get started. Yes. Okay. Sherelle, thank you for that portion of this uh, conversation tonight. We are now going to move to an, a question from the audience. Sure. Yes, ma'am. Hello. Hi, my name is Wallette, and I'm from West Philadelphia. And my question is, I'm a mother, grandmother, and a senior citizen here in Philadelphia. My question to you today is about coming crime in the city. What do you feel your administration will do that others have not done to ensure safe streets, play areas, schools, et cetera, for our families? So one, uh, thank you so very much for the question. Um, first, I want to go back to not being afraid to make the tough decisions that are needed to bring order back to our city. Um, some people get incapacitated when there is not a round of applause and or a choir cheering for your decision making. Leadership requires that you sometimes make decisions that are not popular. In that plan, Shari, that I introduced, I talked about community policing, um, officers proactively walking the beat and riding bikes in our neighborhoods. I talked about addressing quality of life issues. Um, what does that mean? You won't be able to go into a store on a commercial quarter in the city, still $499 worth of merchandise and think that you won't be arrested. You can't think that the jumping on top of a person's car, jumping off an ill illegal vehicle that you should not be on and think that there won't be repercussions. In addition to that, people have to know that the leadership of the police department along with the mayor are on one accord and that there is no finger pointing. So the district attorney, the mayor, um, the police commissioner, a state police, local state and government all working together, the courts, to bring safety and our public health forward to make it our number one priority. And together we will, we will do it. You have to have a collaborative of approach uh, and I'm proud that I am the only candidate in this race who has employed the use of local state and federal government to deliver tangible results. And I think we'll be talking more see. about Thank your you. background in that regards. Uh, let's turn now to a question from a member of the community. My name is Josh from Center City and my question for Philadelphia's next mayor is given the many shuttered storefronts across the city what actions would your administration take to revitalize and support small business in the city? First, I love, love, love. One, I am proud to have been a very early supporter of growing small businesses here in the city uh, of Philadelphia. We have a program called Power Up Your Business. It provides technical support for neighborhood-based businesses. It is now the chief feeder for Goldman Sachs' 10,000 Small Businesses Program, and I am proud to have been the author of that. What is it that we need to do? Much like for any of the excitement that we will be having in our city in the future. We have to get our own house in order. If we want businesses to thrive in Philadelphia, you have to remember why this is essential. If you look at our FY24 budget and that $6 billion of revenue that we are using to run our city, 41% of that revenue comes from business taxes, business privilege, net profits, about 30%, 11% from business income, receipts taxes. We can't do business if we are not safer. A mayor can't be afraid to make the tough decisions to make that happen. We'll do it in concert with the community. I'll have a mayor's community council in every region of the city to ensure that residents are connected to government and not just when there is a crisis, but we must be willing to get our house in order first. And that's what we'll do to support 
support the business community. Yes, we have to revisit the tax structure, continued acceleration of the wage tax, become more competitive, but what we have to do more than anything, Philadelphia, is stop this sense of lawlessness that has taken over our city. We have a lot of questions that we're going to hope to get to tonight. We received hundreds of questions from our six ABC viewers. So here's one right now from Arthur, who is from Northeast Philadelphia. Will you declare a state of emergency and request the National Guard to quell the violence of crime plaguing the city? Arthur in the Northeast, thank you uh, so very much for your question. Uh, during the civil unrest um, that, that rightly occurred uh, as a result of the murder of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and uh, so many others who, whose names um, have gone uh, unknown, we need to make sure that we employ the use of every tool in our toolbox to ensure that Philadelphia's public health and safety is our number one priority. I remember on Wadsworth Avenue, which is near the Sheltonham uh, Avenue and the Wadsworth Avenue intersection, Montgomery County one side of the street, Philadelphia the other, and Governor Tom Wolf then ordered the National Guard to patrol our commercial quarters because ATMs have been blown up. Up. Businesses have been looted. And I remember someone driving through saying, uh, this commercial quarter is being over a uh, police, it's being militarized. And I said to myself, uh, where does that person live? And they said, oh, they just drive through here to get to their job across the street. I said, so they don't live here. No, they don't. But the people who lived there, who did business there, respected the peaceful nature in which we partnered with the National Guard to have them there. Will I call on them to help us, for example, uh, shut down the open air drug market uh, in Kensington that's being allowed uh, to prevail? Um, they will be a part of the solution, what that looks like. Uh, I'm going to have an experienced police commissioner who's going to define what that plan is, but what they will know is they won't have a mayor who they have to work with who is afraid of empowering them with the ability to actually do their jobs and keep our city safe. Quickly, I know you just mentioned Kensington. <laughs> It sounds like that will be, will that be high on your agenda if elected <coughs> mayor? Just a quick answer in reference to Kensington. Absolutely, uh, Shari. Um, open and, and, and I'm sorry, let me be clear, and not mm -hmm. just Kensington, wherever we are having an opioid concern across this city. I, I, I agree, uh, Kensington, and you're right, anywhere else, um, but there was a recent prescription called the Safe Injection Site um, that was proffered as a, um, a prescription to address the opioid crisis. Instead, I want to focus on long-term care, long-term treatment, and long-term housing. Um, one thing that I'm really good at, Shari, is bringing people together. I'm a really good convener. So I want every institution of higher learning, every hospital, mental and behavioral health provider, every long-term housing, transitional housing program available to come together. Let's figure out how we put Philadelphia real estate to use along with the best uh, institutions of higher learning in the nation at work so we can focus on long-term care, treatment, uh, and housing. And to me, I've heard Sherelle, you lack compassion for not supporting safe injection sites. Look, I grew up when the crack cocaine epidemic came and almost drew life away from my very proud West Oak Lane uh, community, and no one talked about a safe crack house as a solution. I heard three words coming from the federal government, and it was just say no, as if it was that easy to beat that chemical addiction. But for the people who survived, they did so with long-term care, treatment, and housing. And if if you give me the opportunity, Philadelphia, I'm going to use every ounce of my academic prowess, my lived life experience, along with my intergovernmental experience to convene the right stakeholders together to make sure we address this issue in our city. All right. Let's go back now to a question from an audience member. Hello, my name is Nayit. I'm from Hunting Park. And my question is, how will you ensure diverse, specifically Latino, representation yes. at every level of government, including your cabinet, department appointments, board, commissions, vendors, and contracting opportunities? 
Shari, the reason why I love this question is because I remember we were uh, in the Latino community of which I received a great deal of support and I thank you. Um, and a question was asked, who would I bring? I said, you know, here I'm an English teacher, right? So James Baldwin comes to mind. <laughs> and James Baldwin would often say during debates and discussions that I can't believe what you say because I see what you do. Latino community in our great city of Philadelphia, I am proud that my campaign is being led by, administered by, one, a former Afro-Latina, and now a Latino man is, a, is the leader of my campaign. So I don't want you to simply, it's not a statement on a website. I remember doing civil unrest, the, the diversity, equity, and inclusion, it became a sexy thing uh, for people to talk about. But for me, ensuring that the people of our city has access to have access to the opportunity to be at the table boards and commissions leadership positions within uh, or, or organizations we have to be intentional about it and about bringing the best and the brightest to the table um, one of the things that has always frustrated me is that whenever we talk about race as it relates to equity at the table somehow best and brightest gets uh, you know lost in that conversation um, we need to be intentional from a race and an ethnic uh, perspective, but we also have to remember that that's the beauty about Philadelphia is our diversity in the fabric, and we can get some of the smartest folks we have available to do it. We have another question now from a member of the community. My name is Reverend Michelle from Germantown, and I have a question for the next mayor of Philadelphia. What are you going to do to support the formerly incarcerated population with decent, affordable housing? Another great question, but not a tough one. Uh, people thought that there was something wrong during the primary election. Um, I unveiled a very aggressive plan to build 30,000 new units of housing here in the city of Philadelphia. And not just one kind of housing, because I'm not interested in building a tiny house for any constituency or any kind of development that will put all low, in, low to moderate income people in one community, but rather, I like a diverse approach to that. Uh, so how will we do that? We have to be intentional. Every property that is currently in Philadelphia's land bank, we have to work with the district council members to come up with a comprehensive plan about how we put those properties back on the market. We get them developed and we put them to good use. We also have to do something that bothered me a great deal when we saw the last round of school closures. When I look at how cheaply we sold some of those buildings. It was almost as if we gave them away, but we had no long-term plan. Imagine if we would have created um, a new term I've coined. It's called affordable luxury, and it does already <laughs> exist here okay. in the city. But imagine if we were building homes where teachers, police officers, uh, nurses, firefighters, um, our uh, children, the families uh, who are here, they wanted to live in those very homes having our former school buildings repurposed for affordable housing. We didn't have a comprehensive approach and or plan. And so when we talk about citizens who are being, who are re-entering our community, they have to be a part of the discussion as well and not as an afterthought, uh, right? We have to have a holistic approach. I want our children in school being trained by the building trades to build these houses. I talk to my good friends, Ryan Boyer, Mungu Sanchez at the Carpenters all of the time. They know what my expectations are and I believe that we can do it. We just have to have that convening and that comprehensive uh, planning necessary to make it happen. We are wrapping this portion and I want to make sure you get your time to address the audience and those who are watching but I do have to ask you and it's only a quick answer yes ma'am where do you stand on the arena 
uh, I have not committed to a yay or a nay, but Philadelphia is the poorest big city in the nation. We cannot give a knee-jerk no reaction to economic development being proposed of that size anywhere in our city. With that being said, Philadelphia, I'm going to do what I've done all my life, get access to the facts, the best information possible, make an informed decision. And that thing we talked about earlier that was diversity, equity, and inclusion, if I'm the mayor of this city, I want to see it from top to bottom, and I want to see the long-term impacts. I went to school at 11, 18 Market Street. Uh, I got hot dogs with my grandmother at Woolworths. I went across the street to the gallery, and I took a picture on Santa Claus's lap at Wanamaker. So you know that area, right? And listen, and it, <laughs> it and it, it it's near Center City. It's near Chinatown. I remember being in high school, and people would say, "Describe where you go to school," and I would say, "Listen, I'm downtown, but we can walk to Chinatown. We have to make sure the community." included they have a right to have a say but we will see what this overall impact is for the entire city thank you for thank answering you. that Ms. Sherelle Parker now will have 45 seconds to say whatever she likes to any and everyone who is listening Philadelphia, I am proud to be your Democratic nominee for mayor of the city of Philadelphia. My real life lived experience is closest to the people that are feeling the most pain right now in our city. It's because of that that I will not be afraid to make the tough decisions needed to bring order back to our city. Together, we'll make our city the safest, cleanest, greenest big city in the nation with access to economic opportunity for all all. I ask you to participate in democracy. Vote on November the 7th. If you already have that mail-in ballot, look at both sides. Someone told me they didn't turn over the other side. You have to look at both sides, but please vote. I'm going to be my authentic self. I won't pander to an audience because of their race, class, or socioeconomic status, but I'm going to give you the best that I've got, Philadelphia, if you give me the opportunity to be your mayor. Thank you. Sherelle Parker, everyone. for the conversation. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back with Republican candidate David O. See this red car? Here's what it means. It means local auto dealers are helping local kids. When I say local, I mean local, like the greater Philadelphia area. You see, one in six local kids doesn't have a new warm winter coat. That has to change. Help us as we continue to give more coats and more smiles to area kids who need them most. Visit morethanautodealers.com to make a donation today. Discover BetMGM Casino and leap into a world filled with all your favorite casino games. Plus exclusive ones you can't find anywhere else. And progressive jackpots that keep growing. All of it right at your fingertips. Bet MGM Casino. Start your adventure today. Welcome back. I'm Shari Williams. You're watching a new chapter of the Philadelphia Mayoral Candidates Town Hall presented by 6ABC. This in partnership with the Linfest Institute's Every Voice, Every Vote initiative. Last half hour, you heard from Democratic candidate Cheryl Parker. Now we will bring in Republican candidate David O. Thank you so much for joining us and for the conversation we're going to have. Uh, this is just great. We, uh, of course, are dedicated to making sure those who are voting have an opportunity to know where the candidates stand. Yes. David O, it's so good to see you again, sir, here in person. Oh, thank you very much. Um, my understanding is you still live on the same block where you grew up. I sure do. Yeah, and so clearly you love this city. I love the city yeah. and um, I love my neighborhood. Although it has a lot of troubles, I live in King Sessing. We, we call it Cobbs Creek. I was just talking to a friend about it. Uh, our whole lives we called it Cobbs Creek because we live right next to Cobbs Creek. 
For those then who uh, haven't had maybe the privilege of living here and being a resident, but those who are watching and interested in this race, they absolutely call this place home. What is it about Philadelphia that you think is just uh, the greatest asset about the city? It's clearly the people. We're, uh, we're a, um, a kind of a blue collar town. We have many different people. We have uh, professionals, we have uh, artists, we have innovators. Um, we're a city of neighborhoods. But one thing about Philadelphia is among the diversity of people is just the grittiness and honesty and authenticity of Philadelphia. We see it in our sports, right? Sometimes we get criticized for that too. <laughs> yes. But yeah, Philadelphians are um, a very talented and special uh, bunch of people. And um, there's a lot of resilience in being a Philadelphian. And so like the movie Rocky, we got to champion the people. If I were to ask you this question, who is David O? How would you answer that? Well, I would say uh, I'm the son of a pastor who founded the first Korean American church in Philadelphia. Uh, my father and mother uh, lived through the occupation, uh, World War II, the Korean War, before coming to Philadelphia and uh, dedicated themselves uh, to serving the church and um, uh, very much uh, living in uh, King Sessing, Southwest Philadelphia. I went to public school and, and uh, live there today with my children. There are many problems in my neighborhood from uh, uh, dumping, uh, homicides, uh, violent crime, other types of things. But at the end of the day, that, that's what makes uh, uh, me want to be a public servant, want, to, want me to be someone who can be part of the solution to these problems. You are a husband, yep. a father of four. How much does being a parent impact the changes that you want to see happen when it comes to public uh, education and also public safety in the city of Philadelphia? Yeah, being a, a parent, in my case, being a father is very important. Uh, my father was a fantastic father, not because he was there all the time, not because he was a wealthy person or could provide a lot, just, just because he was a man of beliefs and commitment. And I always felt that what he was doing was very important. And so I had great respect for him. Uh, I admired him. And I really thought to myself, I don't think I could be that kind of a man, that kind of a father. And so becoming a father, um, it's important for me to really kind of focus on what that means. And then I think about all the kids who, who don't have fathers or whose fathers are incarcerated or, or who have struggles in their lives. It's wonderful that we have so many good parents, so many you know fantastic kids doing great, but we have a lot of uh, kids who really need our help and the help of government. And, and that I think is very important. It sounds like you really come from a strong foundation when it comes to family. Yes. Uh, what life lessons then did you receive from your parents that you are now hoping to pass on to your children? Well, um, one is you have to have faith. Um, and faith is something that you put into a higher purpose. And what I mean is don't be discouraged. Uh, don't be discouraged by ridicule or doubt. Uh, set your mind to what you want to do if it is for a good cause. And then uh, faith is to do what other people won't do and to really believe that you can make that difference, not all by yourself, but with the help of God and with the help of community, you can make a change. And sometimes if you are blessed to do so, a very dramatic change because you, you try. You talked about some of the troubles that you have uh, encountered and you see daily right in your own neighborhood. Sure. And I know, of course, it's been well documented, but everyone maybe isn't aware. Uh, you were attacked and stabbed yes. in 2017 right in front of your own home. And I am so glad you recovered from that. Oh, and you're, you. you're here with us and still, of course, contributing to the city of Philadelphia. Um, you're recovering physically, but I am, I am gonna just wager here that that, of course, sticks with you uh, in your being. Six years later, residents, though, we can't really talk about Philadelphia without talking about the crime yeah. and the concern. How does that personal encounter that you faced inform you to agree Aggressively reduce crime. Yeah, that personal encounter um, was really, I say, me meeting one of my neighbors who I had not, never met before. And um, my staff asked me um, on behalf of a reporter, you know, are, are like, um, you know, are you, are you um, 
you know, very, very upset about that. And then I responded, I said, well, you know, I mean, I really have no animosity towards him. And it was reported in the press, like, uh, kind of like I was saying a good thing, like, oh, he doesn't have animosity. But I corrected that because what I was saying when I said I don't have any animosity is it's inconsequential to me. Like, it is not a big deal to, to me that I got stabbed or things like that. And I really reflected on that because I felt bad about what I said and I felt bad about the fact that I was being credited as a good person. Because what I should have said is it is consequential that I have met this person. Why did God bring us together? But for a good purpose. And uh, I should think about him and other people like him. And uh, as an elected official, what can I do to make his life better and people like him better uh, so that we don't have these types of incidences? And so I think it's important, one, because it's an opportunity to talk about forgiveness. And I think forgiveness is one of the critical elements that we need to have here in Philadelphia and quite frankly, around the world. that We don't bear grudges, we don't seek retribution, we just let things go. And I think uh, forgiveness comes from love. And um, you know, love is a very important thing for us to have in our city if we're gonna heal and move forward as one people. I think people who thought you were a good person then would still think the same based on the answer <laughs> yeah. you just gave. Yeah, thank you. Your point being that there's a lesson to learn. Uh, yes. There was something to come out of it yes. that could be positive. Yes. David O, if mayor, if you are elected, you would be, um, that would really mark an epic, remarkable achievement. It would mean a Republican <laughs> has won yes. in the city of Philadelphia, which hasn't happened since the 1950s. Uh, you would be the first Asian yes. American if elected. But politics aside, what is your greatest accomplishment? Politics aside? Yeah. Well, uh, my greatest accomplishment is my family, which I take no credit for. I mean, I think, um, you know, uh, sometimes the things you don't deserve, you didn't earn, are the things that you cherish most. And I have to really appreciate, you know, the blessing that my wife and my children are, you know, to me. What uniquely qualifies you? to be the 100th mayor of Philadelphia. We truly are in a historic yes. uh, sec section of, of this time period for this city, and people surely are looking to know, what are we getting into for the next mayor, the 100th mayor of Philadelphia? Yeah, I think uh, the historic nature of this election is to have a mayor that is gonna turn this city around. And I think it is critical at this point in time that we have a change in this city. We have been going down this same road for too long. Um, what qualifies me is I'm an outsider with experience on city council and in politics. I have run against uh, just about everybody. And um, the reason for that is I'm very independent. Um, and and I, I think the first thing is we need a strong mayor who will lead our city um, out of the, uh, the gun violence, the violence and the crime, and the lawlessness that we are faced with right now. People don't feel safe, and until they do feel safe, uh, we will not have better education, people will not be looking for jobs, uh, we cannot have a return of tourism or business or things like that. I'm a former prosecutor, I served in the military, I have done criminal defense work as well. I think I'm very even-handed and fair, but above all, I want to respect the Constitution and the laws, but we're going to make people safe, and that has to be something that we have a commitment for. I have been committed to that, uh, from the time I've been in the district attorney all, all the way until my 11 years of service on council, I've been consistent in uh, providing public safety and my bills, resolutions, and my initiatives have reflected that, making our city safe. And I know you served in the armed forces. Oh, thank thank you. you so much for uh, your service to this country. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit more um, as we are getting ready to close this portion yes. uh, of the town hall. Um, what I want to know from you is your thoughts in regards to leadership at the Philadelphia Police Department. What are your thoughts in selecting a commissioner? Well, the first thing I think about is that our police uh, force unfortunately is demoralized and they're confused and lost. Um, and so we need to be very clear as mayor, very clear with our police and our citizens what is the future of law enforcement and public safety going to be? Um, I want to have a police commissioner who reflects uh, exactly what I want to do. One is we need to rebuild our police force because we are now more than 1,300 police officers short. Uh, we probably have to hire about 1,400, 1,500 new officers. 
And in order to have that, they have to be, they have to want to be part of our police force. So they want to do their job. Their job consists of enforcing the law as it is written in a colorblind, fair, and even-handed manner. But of all, above all, their job is to protect the rights of people. So we can all coexist together. No one should be afraid of the police. Everyone should feel that they can approach police officers. That means the officers have to know the community. They have to know who lives in what house. They have to be friendly, knowledgeable, and courteous. And for them, in order to do their jobs, I want to equip them with the best technology, drone technology and other types of, of, of scientific technology so that they will be safest and their responses will be most accurate and efficient. And, and uh, I want to assure people um, one of the reasons why I, I, I differ on the stop and frisk issue. I, I was a former uh, prosecutor and, and I understand there, there, there are legal Terry stops right now, stop and frisk. You don't hear about them. When we hear about them, it is because someone has violated the law. They have violated a people's constitutional rights. But when you send out a police force into a neighborhood to specifically do stop and frisk, that is going to be counterproductive to real public safety because it makes a, a, a barrier between the police and, and the community. So I would never do that. We want our police to be the heroes that our community wants, and, and that is the way we would do it. Great. David O, that wraps that part of our, of our conversation here. Now it is time to hear some of the issues that are on the minds of our voters. And let's now get our first question from the audience for David O. Hi, my name is Clayton. I'm from South Philly. <clears throat> and my question is, what are your detailed strategies for supporting the residents of Kensington while also solving slash ending the ongoing drug crisis there? Yeah, that's, that's a very important point. I believe Kensington is just an example of the worst possible policies um, that this government has produced. And quite frankly, it's very discriminatory. Why do these residents not merit having rights and, and legal, uh, um, you know, uh, um, uh, well, legal rights? But uh, so what I would do as mayor is this. One is uh, I will announce to everyone, because I think communication is important, that from the time I become mayor, all law laws will be enforced. And in Kensington, we will start with um, the fact that drones will go out. We will uh, videotape everyone. We'll let them know what we're doing, and then we'll tell them. On this certain date, we will begin to arrest all open-air drug dealers. Uh, you should uh, not be doing that. And when we do that, we will arrest all other lawbreakers, and I will send the police out there, and we will stay there to ensure there's no illegal dumping, there's no illegal tractor trailers. When the police arrive, the streets are cleaned. It's not just that the police arrive, because when they arrive, we can not only clean the streets, but keep them uh, clean and make sure the residents are safe and let the kids come out. Um, I'm going to coordinate with um, the transit police. I'm going to coordinate with the school police. We're going to clean up that neighborhood. And then we put a plan together whereby we're going to reinvest in the community, because that community has been destroyed on purpose by government policy. It'll have to be rebuilt on purpose with government policy. It sounds as if you really want to use surveillance to help you do that, surveillance through drone. Yeah, you know, the problem with Kensington Avenue is this, it's just the volume. There's too many people there because instead of going or staying in their communities, they're coming to Philadelphia because it's lawless and you could buy drugs right in front of the police, you could do drugs in front of the police, they live on the streets, they defecate, prostitute, all of those things are, you know, the police, their hands are tied. And why is that? And so um, it is inhumane, inhumane conditions. Um, and and uh, if we begin to clean that place up, we are showing the residents we care. But at the same time, when, when people stop coming to Kensington as the worst place for, you know, the best place for them to do the worst things, we now have reduced volume and we can start to focus on those who need care, quality care, with longer, you know, a length of stay and other types of real, really good services. And I wanna ensure that happens. Let's now turn to a pre-taped question from a member of the community. Hi, my name is Sadiq. I'm from North Philly. Uh, my question for Philadelphia's next mayor is uh, as far as large scale construction goes, uh, with so much development going on between the rivers, uh, what kind of initiatives and incentives can we expect to be put forth uh, throughout the rest of the city uh, to ensure that the growth that's taking place 
uh, doesn't miss majority of his population and his longtime residents. Yeah, it's a very important point. I mean, we, we need to have growth in the city. We need to have jobs. And so one of the things that I've done is I've reached out to uh, investors from overse uh, overseas. I've had a meeting with the building trades with 22 different nations of investors about building state-of-the-art buildings in, in our city to house employers that would hire them. But when we do that type of work, um, that, that is the skilled people who are working there, mostly union folks and things like that. But at the same time, we have, we have construction going on in our neighborhoods. So I introduced a bill that did pass. It was a bill that basically dealt with equal opportunity plans, uh, such that if we have equal opportunity plans that require uh, minority and female participation, um, and it's usually in the contract as well, that if the requisite number, because we do studies, are not on the job site, we will withhold payment. Mm -hmm. I want to ensure that there's no fraud or discrimination or no racism for qualified people. The other thing that I fought over is um, the issues about rebuild. Rebuild was promised to communities that if you pay this extra money for your sodas, um, then you will be building uh, the rec centers and repairing them, but that has not happened. And, and the, the, the legislation passed without the clause. There was supposed to be a clause that this would not happen unless there was a guarantee of minority participation from the neighborhood. And then we have um, a, a, a large workforce that we need to employ, particularly those who are returning from, from our prisons, who we need to make sure, with the right training, are on the job sites, people in our communities. So as mayor, I will ensure that we have a lot of construction projects that we are building, we are repairing, we rehab, rehabilitating, but we are going to have employment from our communities because every study shows that there's a large group of people of skilled labor in our communities that are not getting employed and they need to be employed. Let's now take a question that came in from one of our six ABC viewers through yes. online. Audrey from Manioc, she asked, and we talked about this a bit, how do you plan to curb the violence in our city and help residents feel safe in their homes? Well, th the first thing is they have to see a difference. Um, and uh, from the time that I'm sworn in, there will be uh, police vehicles, bicycles um, in those hotspot areas. I think one of the things, the messages that we send, when there's violence and people don't see any response from our city, it means we don't care. So we have to show them that we care. Their safety is important to us in the schools, in the subways, everywhere. But then we have to make sure that in our business district we are safe as well. Because if people don't come back to work, like so many people don't come back to Center City, they're not paying their wage tax. And that puts all that pressure back on our residents. So we want to have a robust Center City. We want tourists to come in. We want to attract them. We want them to stay in our hotels. We want them to go to concerts. That helps our musicians. That helps our uh, uh, artists. We want to make sure that we have a creative, innovative economy going on here, our theater. All of those type of things, we have to bring this city uh, back to life. But we start with public safety, clean public transportation, and making sure, look, as mayor, I'm going to fight with SEPTA. As mayor, I'm going to fight with American <laughs> Airlines. Um, I will not tolerate the conditions that we have, our, our public transportation. They're dirty, they're filthy, they're unsafe, there aren't police there. People won't use it. And for our airport, we need to have other types of flights coming in. And, and I think those have been neglected areas. I want our city to be much more of a global destination point. We do now have a question from another member who's here in the audience uh, with us, and, and I'm trying to see if this may be something you've already talked at length about, so let's see. Hi, my name is Abana. I'm from North Philadelphia, and my question for you is, as our next mayor, what steps will you take to attract new industries and investments to our Philadelphia city? Yeah. Yes. Um, as a newly elected council member in 2012, um, actually, before I was actually sworn in, I went to the council president and said, we need a committee on global opportunities and a creative, innovative economy. And I think that's one of the key areas. I mean, I have been a strong advocate of the creative arts economy because it is, has so, so much lift for us. 
prior to the pandemic, $3.4 billion. I mean, $920 million in household income and $157 million in local taxes. But, but such a greater float because so many people aspire to be who they want to be. They have talent, they have skill, they have determination, but they need a platform. And so for me, uh, dealing with the creative arts economy, uh, dealing with uh, the manufacturer that is going to be coming back to the United States, but we have to go out and get it. Uh, we have to plan on bringing it into our city. Uh, we have to ensure that people have money in the neighborhood and communities that they can though go and support those small businesses, and we want to encourage entrepreneurship. But let me also say that so many of our communities are so undervalued. Every different community, from our Haitian community, our Jamaican community, our Liberian community, our Chinese community, our Mexican community, our Puerto Rican community, all these different communities, Russian-speaking, Ukraine, they are little economic engines of, of cuisine, of culture, of music, of, of because human beings want to interact in a stimulating environment. And I always say you can get great food out in the, in, in the suburbs, Mexican food, Chinese food, but there's nothing like Philadelphia where you're really dealing with the people. That's really authentic. It's the flavor, it's the smells, it's the community, but above all, it's the people. And I believe if we engage in the global marketplace, so many of our people are connected overseas, we will have new investments, new jobs, new opportunities, and new wealth for our folks in the city. Let's take our last question in this segment. Yes. Uh, for now, we have a question from a community member. Let's listen in. My name is Sarah from Fishtown. My question to Philadelphia's next mayor is what is your plan to empower the region to expand green infrastructure? And how will you make sure these improvements are accessible to all regions of the city across all income levels? Mr. O, we only have about 60 seconds for you to okay. answer this question. So there are the most obvious things, such as uh, coating the roofs, uh, putting tree canopy in, making sure our air quality is good, um, dealing with many of the sections of our city that need to have more greening and environmental you know, supports, dealing with alternative fuels and things like that, which, by the way, I did on council. I tried to introduce bills on our alternative fuels. Um, but I want to really look at some really outstanding places like Songdo City in Incheon, where they built a new section for um, 77,000 inhabitants and 365,000 workers, all state-of-the-art, because they put a, a, a very modern section in all like uh, 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 environmentally sound and everything. We need some model areas in our city to really show what the best technology can do, put people in there who have uh, age-friendly disabilities, things like that so, that, so that we can show what is the best we can do in this city and put it throughout so we have clean water, clean air. Now, quickly, a lightning round. I'm going to ask yes. you a couple of quick questions, sure. just a quick answer, okay? Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, what is your favorite restaurant in Philadelphia? Oh, so listen, it, it, so unfair question, but <laughs> just I'll, one. I'll just point out a little restaurant called Shing Key at 6 in Washington. It's not a pronounced place, so if you go there, you will find uh, a quiet little place with some of the greatest food at the most affordable prices. <laughs> <laughs> That's always a good combination, good yes. food, good prices. David O, you now have 40 seconds to say whatever you'd like to those listening. All right, thank you very much. Our, our city is a great city. I mean, that stands the test of time. And we could be an even greater city if we would look at technology, look at our, our global economy, look at what we offer with the sciences and all that we have here, but most of all, the people. But we will not be a great city if people cannot uh, achieve what they want as a human being right here in our city. But before we get to that, we're going to have to make our city safe. And we're going to have to really ensure that everyone feels safe. And that's going to be through policing. But that policing has to be at your service. And when we do that, other things will happen. So the police will give us a break from the violence, from the murder, from, from the fear. But immediately, we have to reform our schools, change our government to really suit the people in our, our community. It is a time for change. The politics, has, it has got to change. David O, thank you so much, Republican candidate for the city of Philadelphia. We want to thank you so much for joining us for a new chapter, the Philadelphia Mayoral Candidates Town Hall, presented by 6ABC in partnership with the Lynn Fest Institute's Every Voice, Every Initiative. I'm Shari Williams. Please vote on November 7th. Have a great night.